Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today I have prepared easy problem for you. This is probability problem. I hope that uh, most of you would be able to solve this problem. So I recommend you to pause video here, try to solve this problem on your own first and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. So here is a problem. A couple both heterozygous for albinism have five children. What is the probability that at least one child will be albina? Let's start with listing genotypes of the parents. So basically here we talk about uh, crossing of two genotypes of parents who are both heterozygous. So here is a cross and now let's build simple Punnett square. One parent on top, another parent on the side. And now let's see what would be probability for this couple to have um, children who is going to be affected or unaffected. So capital A, capital A here, capital A, small a here, capital A, small a here, and small a, small a here. And as you see, three quarters of the progeny would have normal phenotype. So three quarters. And according to our Punnett square, one quarter of the progeny we expect to be affected. Now uh, let's uh, every box here represent a child in this family. So two, three, four and five. So now we have five boxes. So now uh, let's say what is the probability that the first child would have um, normal phenotype. And according to our Punnett square the probability that the first child would have normal phenotype would be three quarters. And what is the probability that the second child also would have normal phenotype. It's also going to be three quarters. Right now I'm looking for the situation when this couple would have first child normal, second child normal, third child normal, fourth child normal and fifth child normal. Why I am looking for this particular sequence? Because this is the only variant when a uh, family uh, wouldn't have at least one child who wouldn't uh, be affected. The only variant when all five children would be phenotypically normal. So that's why I'm looking for such probability and every time this couple would conceive uh, a child and would have a child, uh, the probability would be three quarters that child would be phenotypically normal and every time they would have one quarter probability that the child would be affected. But once again right now we are interested to find probability that all five children would be phenotypically uh, normal. So now we have to multiply all these probabilities. To find uh, probability that uh, all five children in a family would be phenotypically normal. So this three multiplied by this three we are going to get nine. Multiplied by three we are going to get twenty seven. Multiplied by three eighty one. And multiplied by three two hundred forty three. So and here 4 multiplied by 4 would be 16, multiplied by 4 would be 64, multiplied by 4 would be 256, and multiplied by 4 going to be 1024. So now we have found probability uh, which is going to be 243 over 1000. 24 for this family to have all five children to be 
uh, phenotypically normal. And even without calculator, we can say that this is roughly uh, about 24%. But uh, let's find out probability uh, for family to have at least one child uh, that is going to be affected. So how many probabilities, for example, first child can be affected and four normal or second child can be affected and once again uh, all the rest can be normal or it can be two, so different variants possible or three or four or even all five children also can be affected. But probability would be much smaller because this time we have to multiply one quarter by one quarter by one quarter and by one quarter in order to find probability that all five children would be affected. But such probability also exists. So uh, next step, what we basically have to do, by the way, we also can say that uh, what we have on top, it is three quarters raised five. So because we have to multiply three quarters by itself five times. And basically this number represent probability that all five children would be unaffected. So all the other variants would at least have one affected child. So we can say that one minus this number would represent a number uh, or frequency uh, where we would have uh, at least one affected child. Because we are using fractions today, so we also can say that uh, this would equal to 1024 divided by 1024. So uh, if we divide uh, this number by itself, we are going to get 1. So instead of 1, we can also write this number. And we already know that this would equal to this number. So minus 243 divided by 1024 and the answer going to be 781 divided by 1024 and if we divide these numbers we are going to get 0 0.76 but um, this number that we uh, got, or this answer, uh, is on the scale between 0 and 1. And if you need an answer on the scale between 0 and 100%, we have to multiply this answer by 100. And now we got our answer in percentage form. So our answer would be the probability that at least one child in this family uh, would be affected is 76%. Uh, As I said before, we already saw it at this step that uh, 24 is about, uh, as you see, 243 is about 24% out of 1024. And this represents uh, probability that all five children would be normal. So all the other variants would be uh, at least uh, where one child would be affected. Or it can be two, three, four, uh, or even five. So this is going to be our answer today. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. Share this video with your classmates and see you in the next video. Goodbye.